Hello there, I am the Common Sense Guy, or as some of you would know me better as I'm Jason. How are you all doing? Every now and again you get a video in which you feel that you have to respond to. And this is a video that I have to respond to because of the blatant racism in this video. And yes, it is a group of people of colour telling the white straight male, nothing to do with women apparently, but white straight men, that they are the sole reasons for every single problem that has ever happened to them. So let's, let's find out the reasons, what's going on and stuff like that, shall we? What's good? My name is Chetty Cross. So according to Ben Shapiro, America is the least racist, most open country in the world. <laughs> so the best thing that you can do to try and refute somebody that says that America is the least racist country in the world, which maybe you could dispute, maybe you could, but the way that you dispute it is by laughing at it. Not by putting any counterfacts or retorts or anything at all, but just by laughing at it. Well, I can tell this is going to be a great informative video to begin with. Welcome to the Straight White Male's Guide to Oppression. Sit back, relax, and gain some perspective other than your own. Wow, so this whole video is dedicated just to white straight men and how to change their perspective on everything. It's almost like you are prejudging a whole group of people by their ethnicity and by their gender to decide in what outward processes that they would actually have. Wait, I'm sure that that's the definition of something somewhere, isn't it? Dear straight white men, according to NPR, 92% of African Americans believe that racial discrimination is a prevalent issue in America. So either you think we're so stupid that we can't form observations about our own lives, or you're not listening. Hmm, this is going to be very, very interesting because for once you've actually listed the source. So, I've actually gone and found that source. So let's actually go and have a look at the source that you've actually used, shall we? So, as you can see, this is the NPR news article. Well, I suppose you could use it as a news article that they have used for their source. Now, let's, let's have a quick look at this, shall we? First of all, you'll notice the actual title. 92% of African Americans say, say, black Americans face discrimination today. So that means that 92% of people that were asked say that they think that other black Americans or African Americans face discrimination. This isn't fact, this isn't truth, this is what people think about what other people think and feel. Now let's, let's go down a little bit, shall we? So a new survey looks at who feels discriminated against in America. The short answer, everyone, but for different reasons, and for some, it's nothing new. NPR's Code Switch team reports on how African Americans responded, but not on how anybody else responded. Because as it says in the short answer of the survey in which they actually did, everybody feels discriminated for different reasons. The actual point in the source that you're using is a little bit skewered, considering the survey was to look at how people felt and who feels discriminated. And the actual point was that they found that everybody feels discriminated. So let's have a look at the quick host, shall we? Americans of many different backgrounds say racial discrimination is a factor in their daily life of the country. That's according to a new survey out today from NPR. The Robert Wood Johnson Foundation and the Harvard T. H. Chan School of Public Health researchers surveyed people from various social ethnic groups to see how and how much they've experienced discrimination. Karen Gisby-Bates, 
of NPR's Code Switch team reports on how the study's findings from the group that reported facing the most discrimination. Notice how they said reported. This is all on how people feel. This is all on how people think. And mostly, the question was, how do you think other people feel about discrimination? You have a little bit of a, a sound bite that seems to, seems to pop up here that goes through a antidotal evidence of what's going on and what's, what's happening anyway. But yet, yeah, all it seems to be is forms of antidotal evidence. There is no structured evidence, no collaborating evidence, there is no substantiating evidence. This is all antidotal. We're straight white men. No one wakes up in the morning with this idea of oppression. It doesn't make us feel all warm and fuzzy inside to be victims. So why do you always classify yourselves as victims then? And I don't mean you as a personal or as an individual. I mean you as an ethnicity. Yourselves always classify everybody in an ethnicity as a victim of this or a victim of that. You don't classify the individuals or the group that's in that particular area or a group that's in a particular situation. You classify your whole ethnicity as victims. So why do that if you don't like being classified as victims? Straight white men. LGBTQ youth are almost five times as likely to have attempted suicide compared to heterosexual youth. So, you are correct that yes, they are five times more likely to try and commit suicide for particular reasons. But this is an MD study that has been published in the medical journal. And this is transgender, gender non-conforming youth suffer more mental health conditions than cisgender counterparts. Now, just having a quick read of this, according to a new study, results published in a Pediatrics Transgender and Gender Nonconforming Youth are diagnosed with mental health conditions more frequently than young individuals identifying with gender assigned at birth, or their gender assigned at birth. While previous studies have often been limited by self-reporting and small sample sizes, in this large cohort analysis, researchers utilize electronic medical records on a transgender, gender non-conforming group enrolled in a comprehensive care system between 2006 and 2014. And researchers assessed a cohort of 588 trans feminine, in other words, male to female, 44% and 745 trans masculine and all of these were between children 3 to 9 year olds and adolescents between 10 to 17 year olds and they were all enrolled into permanent integrated healthcare systems in California and Georgia to examine the prevalence of mental health conditions like anxiety, depression and suicidal thoughts. The reason why I bring all of this up it is not all about discrimination. It is unfortunately side effects of mental health conditions that are more prevalent in people that are transgender or gender non-conforming. This doesn't mean it's a good or a bad thing. It means that we need to take a look at this more hard rather than trying to skewer results into a narrative that we want to push. Straight white men, 92% of transsexuals have attempted suicide. So, this is the Trevor Report, and because I want to give you the actual facts and the actual citations and sources, I will link every single citation and source that I've used thus far in the description box below. This is the Trevor Project, Facts About Suicide, and the sixth bullet point down, you have in a national study, 40% of adults reported having made a suicide attempt. So that means 40% out of the 100% of people that they asked that were transgender had tried to commit suicide. Now out of that 40% that tried to commit suicide, 92% of that 40% tried to commit suicide before the age of 25. 
this is where they are getting their numbers from. They are cherry picking them to portray it even worse than what it is. Now, don't get me wrong. This is a subject that we need to talk about as anybody that is depressed enough to try and commit suicide needs to have people supporting them. No questions asked. Don't try and cherry pick to make it look worse than what it is to fit a narrative that you are trying to fit. Here's straight right man. People usually attempt suicide due to a lack of support and acceptance from the society around them. So, this is from Psychology Today, which is UK and it can be US based. But this is from Psychology Today, so most people would agree with this definition in the psychology world. These are six reasons, which I also link in the description box below on why people try to kill themselves one they are clinically depressed two they are clinically psychotic three they are impulsive four they're crying out for help five they have a philosophical desire to die sixth they made a mistake so out of an, all of these six reasons Society's problems to be able to help them is not there. Not getting help and recognition is not there. So, me thinks that you're full of shit in reasons why people are actually trying to commit suicide. And the fact in which that you would lie about the reasons why people commit suicide proves that you're trying to falsify a fucking narrative that you're trying to push rather than trying to help people that are actually committing suicide because you won't accept the fucking reasons why they try to commit suicide. And the most important one out of there is that they have depression, which is number one on the fucking list and yet that number one that they're depressed comes with being gender dysphoric which is another point of why people commit suicide and you not trying to address that is negating the reasons why people are committing suicide but you know push a narrative that you need to push dear straight white men you created the society around them so most cities suburbs estates states in general don't have their own culture, don't have their own identities, don't have their own ways of doing things. Are you trying to say that sub-societies don't exist and that white people are the only ones that are able to create societies? Can you not create your own society? Can you not change the society in which you're in? Do you have to wait for other people to do it for you? Or is that because you're a victim? Dear straight white men, it is your responsibility to help fix the society around you. It's also your responsibility to fix the society that's around you as well and not blame one particular group for all of your problems. You have been addressing white straight males all the way through this program, but yet they are not the only people that are stopping you from moving forward. The ones that are stopping you from moving forward are you. You're straight white men. Hate speech does incite violence. No, only language that incites people to actions or calls to action can incite calls to violence and cause violence. Talking about particular issues does not create violence. And yes, I know that you're not a racist, sexist, xenophobic, homophobic bigot, but you have to understand that there are very many people that are, and your rhetoric that consistently minimizes the very real trauma that people face validates the overtly oppressive behavior that those who listen to you may commit. I'm sorry, right there and there, are you trying to equate what certain peoples will do is by a cause by what certain people might say as in saying that you're not as oppressed as what you think you are as being proven in this own video so me saying that you're not as oppressed as what you think you may well be is now me calling for incitement of violence towards people of color because i'm calling out your lies and hypocrisy and bullshit well just so i know Dear straight white men, intersectionality is not choosing to be the victim of multiple forms of systemic oppression, it is actually being the victim of multiple forms of systemic oppression. And you are the victor! Hooray! 
So, the great thing about intersectionality is, especially when you've got a little picture board up here, is you, you can go through it. So let's start off with race. I'm white. In this particular video, you are addressing that everybody that is white is oppressing you. So I get points for you oppressing me just because I'm white and including me in that definition. Education. I have low standing education. I come from a public school background. So that would mean that I would get points for being low educated. My sexuality. I am a straight male at this point in time or a cisgender. That means that you are oppressing me at this moment in time because this video is directed to straight cis men and white men. Which means I get points for that because you are actually oppressing me during my sexuality. My ability. I am disabled. That also means that in your intersectionality point scheme, I get points for being disabled. My age. I am also slightly older than the average YouTuber. Does that mean that you are going to discriminate me upon my age? As in being ageist towards me. Oh, looks like I get points for that as well. Oh, gender. You've been talking to me about my male privilege, my white male privilege, all through this video, trying to suggest that because I am a male, that I get some leverage of privilege because of it. Well, doesn't that mean that you're oppressing me because of my gender? Oh, points for that. Ethnicity. I'm a white English person, which means that you would classify me as a colonial, which means I would be oppressing you in some way or some form due to my historical context or my ancestors because of it. Oh, looks like I get points of that because you're oppressing me because of something that I've never been part of. Oh, culture. I'm part of a westernized culture that also tries to keep everything as egalitarian as possible or as multicultural as possible, but yet because of this, I'm going to get blamed for particular things of nothing that I have actually done, which means that I'm getting oppressed because of stuff that I haven't done due to the culture in which I inhabit. Oh, points to me. Language. Again, I speak English. So that means that I'm from a colonial background, descendants, which means I've oppressed you in some particular way because of my ancestors. Oh, points to that because I am oppressing you from something that I have never done. Class. Again, I am of low standings. I come from a low class place. Take that as which way in which you want to. But I still get points for that. Which means during this video and during this actual little spider graph that you've drawn, I actually get points on everything. The point is with intersectionality is that you can force yourself to be a victim in any which way you want to. That's the point of victimhood complexes. Yay! Dear straight white men, black people are not awarded the same socioeconomic opportunities as white people. But yet, yeah, on average, people from Asian descent are doing better than the average white person and people from Nigeria, respectively, that have come across to America are actually doing better on average than most white people. So, is it white people that are oppressing you or is it the fact that you need to work hard in a system to actually get somewhere? I don't know. I'm going to guess the latter. Dear straight white men, Women are not awarded the same socioeconomic opportunities as men. Show me anywhere in which a woman is being discriminated against because she is a woman. Show me anywhere in life that is stopping her from having the same opportunities as a man because she is a woman. Show me anywhere that does this, please. Dear straight white men, black women have to deal with both of those factors simultaneously. Again show me anywhere that does this anywhere that does this anywhere at all dear straight white men we live in a heteronormative patriarchy founded upon white supremacy this is not a conspiracy theory this is sociological fact based on documented evidence such as i don't know the constitution which originally awarded political power only to those that were caucasian landowners that had penises wow because nothing's ever changed over the course of history has it the fact that something was written for something to begin with and then has been adapted and changed and adapted to help people in general that's never happened whatsoever has it dear straight white men in that same document when they finally started to acknowledge the presence of slaves as part of the population 
only three-fifths of the black population was counted, thus in essence politically defining black people as only three-fifths human. So, for most Americans, the 15th Amendment, which was ratified in 1870, was able to give African Americans the rights to vote. Now, this was predominantly for most of America, but unfortunately, due to some southern states, which was the main reason for the Civil War in general, that they were finding loopholes in the way in which that they could actually stop black people from voting or people of colour from voting in general. Some of these would have been through discriminatory practices such as poll taxes, including literacy tests, along with intimidation and outright violence, which were used to actually prevent African Americans from voting. But... In 1867, following the American Civil War, the Republican-dominated U.S. Congress passed the first Reconstruction Act over the veto of President Andrew Johnson. The Act divided the South into five military districts and outlined how new governments based on universal manhood suffrage were to be established. With the adoption of the 15th Amendment in 1970, a politically mobilized African American community joined with white allies in the southern states to elect the Republican Party to power. I wonder why it wasn't the Dixiecrats, I mean Democrats. All the former Confederate states had been readmitted to the Union, and most were controlled by the Republican Party, thanks to the support of black voters. But unfortunately, that Republican Party started to disintegrate because more and more Democrats started to get into power. But before that actually happened, just so everybody can understand that the three-fifths argument is not in void, in the same year, Harlan Rose revealed a Republican from Natchez, Mississippi, became the first African-American to ever sit in a U.S. Congress when he was elected to U.S. Senate. Although black Republicans never attained political office in proportion to their overwhelming electoral majority, reveals that a dozen other black men served in Congress during Reconstruction. More than 600 served in state legislatures and many more held local offices. So to say that the three-fifths argument is worth its paper it's written on is just stupid. Dear straight right men, currently in 2018, the typical black household has just 6% of the wealth of the typical white household. Must be racism. Must be a system that is completely and utterly designed to stop black people from being able to work. Wait, wait, hang on a minute. Didn't you have a black president? Don't you have black leaders? Amazing. Maybe there isn't such racism and it has to do with the actual individual people and what their individual choices are. Like jobs or not having a job is what goes into deciding if somebody has good economic standing. Dear straight white men, property taxes are the primary source of school funding. This means the better the homes in a given neighborhood, the better the schools. Due to historical redlining and hoarding of wealth, the primary occupants of rich neighborhoods are white and the primary occupants of poor neighborhoods are black and brown. So we tend to have worse schools, worse books, lower paid teachers, and thus less opportunity for upward financial progression. Now, I don't know your system as well as I probably should do, but I've got a question for you. If to pay property tax, do you have to be working to pay a property tax? Or do you pay property tax while you're on social mobility or social welfare? Now, I'm not trying to suggest anything, but if you're working, then wouldn't you even pay more property tax than what you would do on social welfare? Doesn't that mean that if you uh, have more people working, in a particular area then that area would gain affluence rather than people moving away from that area does that also mean that the area would actually have more crime in that area to stop people from actually having work or places to go to work to does that also play a role in the fact of property taxes going to the schools does that also play a role in people having no financial incentive to actually make their own progression because they see people that are dealing drugs with more money on the street and use that as an incentive rather than going to school to earn a living properly 
Is that reasons why things happen? Or is it just to do with this racist society that the whites have created? Straight white man. Clearly old stuff done by your ancestors still does affect us to this day. Dear Name one thing that our ancestors did that still affects you to this day. Just one. And if you can, if you can, how does that make me, as a white, straight, cis male, responsible for it? Straight white men, slavery still affects black people to this day. <gasps> Emancipation led to Jim Crow laws, Jim Crow laws led to the war on drugs, and the war on drugs led to over-policing of our communities. So the Emancipation stopped slavery or indebted servitude. You then go on to Jim Crow. Yes, Jim Crow, very, very bad. I completely and utterly fucking agree with you. Very bad, very discriminatory, in most cases racist. Not slavery, though. Not slavery. War on drugs. Yes, definitely discriminative and discriminatory towards a certain group of people. You could argue that it is racist. I will agree with you on that. Not slavery, though. You then go on to the police over-policing in certain areas. Maybe that's due to crime, maybe that's due to racism, maybe that's due to a lot of other systemic situations that are going on. I don't know. But to say that that's slavery? Nah. You're wrong, bro. You're wrong. This straight white men, the more the media casts black and brown people as barbaric savages who have somehow dug their own hole in the ground to no fault of systemic racism, then the more apathy and fear is embedded into the mass consciousness of our citizens that thereby validates racism and stagnates us in the exact same position. Does that mean that the media are actually portraying things as honest as what you think they should do? Or do you think that there should be a bias towards it? So if black people are shooting more people, does that mean that the media should stop it because they are inciting more hatred towards a particular race? Does that mean that they shouldn't be reporting on mass school shootings because it reports on a particular demographic? I don't know. These are your words and your ideas. I do have one question for you though. If these reports are true, does that mean that we shouldn't be reporting on them because you think it encapsulates bad stereotypes of yourselves and we shouldn't be reporting on it? Are you honestly suggesting that we shouldn't tell the truth of what's going on in certain societies or certain places to be able to tell people what is and what isn't going on to actually be able to have a adult conversation about what's actually wrong and what's plaguing the world rather than just saying well the whites did it. Dear straight white men, going natural has only just become a mainstream trend in the black female community as of like the past 10 years. Because it has taken us just that long to even begin to dismantle the self-hate that we developed from your ancestors telling us that the hair that grows out of our scalp is ugly. So two things on this one. First thing, so you're saying in the last 10 years things are changing and things are actually adapting and getting better for you just just so i understand that and second so my ancestors were telling you that your hair is really bad and horrible and whatever and now it's okay to go natural over the last 10 years so how the fuck did any white people's ancestors tell you your hair was bad Dear straight white men, I know you think that we think that your opinions don't matter, but that's not quite it. It's just that your opinions don't matter more than the actual lived experiences of real people. No, you literally just confirmed exactly what most people are thinking. You don't look at evidence and statistics. You look at antidotal evidence backing up a narrative that you've already decided and formulated in your own head evidenced by the video that we have today and the fact is that you say by real people does that mean that the antidotal evidence that i have because i'm white isn't from a real person but because somebody is a different color or a different pigment that they are a real person please choose your words more carefully otherwise people might call you racist you're straight white men your ancestors made everyone who doesn't look like you hate themselves wow that's a little bit Racist, isn't it? Dear straight white men, Islam is not a race. Dear straight white Christian men, Muslims believe in the same God as you. Dear straight white men, Allah means God. Question, why are you suggesting that 
they are only white people that think this. There are millions of people of color that are Christians. There are millions of people that are Hindus. They would think slightly differently. They would not necessarily be the same. Why are you directing this to one ethnicity, you racist bigots? Dear straight white men, although we live in a heteronormative white supremacist patriarchy that puts you in an almost godlike position, God does not always have to look like you. Unfortunately, throughout the ages, anybody that has depicted different forms of gods or God in general has always depicted gods or gods in their own image. Now, if most of the people that are drawing God are white, then generally most of the people that draw gods will draw them as white. Same as most in Chinese cultures, they would be of Chinese descent, Japanese, Japanese, so on and so forth. This is not a race issue, this is to do with a historical context issue. But you know, you racist fucking bigot, make it about race. Dear straight white men, you are not God. Dear straight white men, you do however have the godlike power to enact change. So we have one person saying that you are not God, which is fine. I don't think any white people think that, that they are God. And if they do, they have a thing called a Messiah complex. But with that taken out of play, for instance, you then have the next person after you saying that, weirdly, saying that we do have godlike powers to enact change. Yet you also have the godlike powers to change the society in which you live in yourself, to change yourself, to change in how people interact with you. And this is the whole point in which and why I have done this video, to prove to you that you have been able to make a video complaining about all the systemic pressures that you think have been put into place that are holding you back, and yet you yourself and people that are around you have been able to make this video, publish this video, put your message out there, but yet societal structures are put into place to stop people like you from doing this. You are the evidence in which you need to prove to people that if you work hard and you do what you want to do and what you like, then you will make it in society. Society in itself with the provenance of Barack Obama being a president for eight years, being elected by a racist, homophobic society and country and whatever, has been elected twice by the populace. And yet, as soon as that populace then votes for a white man in, they are now racist. This makes no sense and looks like a victim-blaming complex. To look at what's going on in society and to blame it on a particular set of groups or individuals. All you have done is shown your own racist and bigotry, sir. You have produced this racist rhetoric towards white people. Imagine changing white to black.